Today on Mormon Times, the trials and triumphs of step parenting. Learning to blend two families into one will have ideas for helping families work through the challenges. Standing alone um, is having the courage to stand up for what you believe in. A peculiar celebration by players at a state championship football game. Hear the story behind their singing. Plus, Grammy nominee Jenny Oaks Baker and former Celtic woman Alex Sharp will join us to share an inspiring traditional Christmas carol. Good morning and welcome to Mormon Times. When we marry, we expect that it will be forever, but sometimes our plans don't work out just the way we want it. Whether through the death of a spouse or because of divorce, many people are now learning to blend two families into one as they remarry. These blended families have their challenges, but with lots of work, there are plenty of joys, too. This family seems to be getting it right. Just bring over your chair. In Alliance family, you don't pick a side, you just pick a seat. The table might be full, but the way the conversation flows and the people connect, you wouldn't know that just a few years ago, this one family was actually two. It's just a miracle. When Here. Matt Lyon's wife, Amanda, died of cancer in May 2008, Matt and his three children made a natural connection to Marcy and her six children. Marcy's husband, Jay, passed away in July 2008. It was the kids who first suggested the two families just hang out and a strong, natural friendship quickly formed. We finally found a family that understood what we were going through. You know, other people had stopped by and they just didn't know. And we ended up spending more and more time together and as we did, you know, our families grew closer and closer together. Matt and Marcy married in 2009, making them a family of, yes, that's right, 11. <laughs> and at the center of this blended bunch is one driving goal, to honor the past while focusing on the future had a family meeting before we even moved in and just talked about things that would be different and a lot of times on Sundays we have a family meeting and we talk about you know the week or what's what everyone's thinking or feeling. I, I think if anything we've tried to embrace our past but not continue to look back on it you know and, and preserving the legacy of, of their parents I don't want to take away from that but at the same time recognizing we're now a new family and we have to kind of create a clean start for ourselves and define what that is. Both Matt and Marcy credit the kids for their positive attitude and the acceptance of what is. There's nothing that you can do to change the past. You might as well have a good attitude about where life is going. It's tough, it's different. Just getting used to the different styles people, because we're so used to like a certain style of family runs and then it's like running two different softwares on a computer, it doesn't, it's hard to start working with each other again. But they are working together and making it work well. The secret, open and candid communication. I think the biggest challenge is having time alone. Just I'd love to, we didn't start out like other relationships where you are by yourself. We family dated, we were just did everything with families. So that's I think the hardest thing is I don't get very much time with just Matt. Is every Friday evening we make sure that we schedule time for each other and because it is important for us to get time together that we can just get one-on-one -on -one time and, and enjoy each other's company. They might come from two families, but they are definitely one team and that is the win worth cheering about. <laughs> Great family. Uh, making that transition into a blended family can be a challenge in any environment and can be especially difficult as a member of the LDS Church. Clinical psychologist Dr. Liz Hale joins me to talk about how to smooth this transition and why do you think it's so difficult for church members? Boy, you know, well, let, let's just start with, you know, basic marriage. Initial marriage requires a foundation of education and information. Uh -huh. And then a blended family requires advanced education, almost an advanced degree, if you will. It's just that much more complicated. And it's probably different if you have had a spouse die as opposed to being divorced. Uh, you know, it seems like the more people involved, of course, the greater the complications. Mm -hmm. uh, both both have their challenges. but. Uh, it's certainly the refiner's fire, Michelle. You know what I mean? It's an opportunity to really learn. And as President Kimball said, you know, we didn't get come here to learn how to love ourselves. 
We came here to learn how to love each other. And blended families, boy, talk about a great teacher for that. Yeah, and you said that there are a couple of, of key points that will mm -hmm. help uh, to make it a smooth transition. One is um, expectations. It is so easy to have these high expectations. You know, I'm going to come into this family as a stepmom, and it's going to be great. <laughs> I have so much love in my heart. I'm going to save the day as the man or the woman that's coming to into this family. But it, it's a bit like if we try too hard to force the connection or we try too quickly to discipline, it's a little bit like pulling the Mack truck with a string. It's going to break. Yeah. It takes a lot of time. There's no substitute for time. L allow that string to become more of a cord. Allow that cord to become more of a rope. And then eventually that rope will become a chain. And it can take the force and the push and the pull of whatever we go through in this crazy thing called life, mm -hmm. especially family life. And you say another top secret is to yeah. focus on what's right. I think it's so easy to get caught in the minutia. Make sure that when you're talking to your spouse about their children, that you really utilize the positive. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you have to dig a little deep sometimes, like, yeah. you know what, Johnny has such great hygiene. You really taught him <laughs> well, honey. I'm so impressed. Or, you know, the other day I, I, I overheard Annie being so sweet to Seth. You know, she was helping him with his math, and it just warmed my heart. And also, say positive things about your stepchildren's other parent. Make sure that you're saying, wow, you and your mom make a great team. I tell you, I've never seen anyone who can so address like that. I'm so impressed with how you and your mom have done that. She is a great, a great mother to you, isn't she? So always find the positive. And then not only are your children hearing that and your spouse, but guess who else is over overhearing? Your own inner ear, mm -hmm. Michelle. So not only am I, my spouse might be hearing that, but my own inner ear hears that. And I tend to keep softening my own heart as I listen to the accolades, mm -hmm. the things that are good. That's good. Now, in the piece, we saw that they yeah. had focused a lot on making the time to have family meetings so that they can mm -hmm. look ahead to what's coming mm -hmm. up in the in the upcoming week. Is that, sure. that a major thing? That's a really special family, by the way. I, I must say, I, I just ad adore doing that interview and I really like, like them so much. They do take that standard of being able to have candid and open conversations. I'd even suggest that a step-parent interview his, his or her stepchildren. You know, on a scale of one to 10, Johnny, how am I doing as your stepmother? Hmm. And how am I doing as far as making you feel an important member of this family? And listen intently. Let Johnny choose a number between one and 10. If it's five, just say, and what can I do to be a 10? What would it take for me to be a 10 in your eyes? So I think it's an inventory. Really. Ah, it's really difficult. These stepchildren did not choose you as a parent, typically, right. you know, usually anyway. It's hard enough for two adults to come together, right? Mm -hmm. um, so please keep in mind that that stepchild is often going to feel not as important, not as loved, not as worthy of your attention as they deem your own children to be. So that's a given doesn't mean it's anyone's fault. So come from that premise when you interview that stepchild, like how, how are you and I doing? And what can I do to be a 10 in your eyes? That's great, thanks so much. Mm, yeah, Appreciate my pleasure. having you here, Liz. Mm -hmm. And for more advice and also some additional resources, visit the Mormon Times website. We're at mormontimestv.ksl.com. Well, December is a great time to reflect on the life of the Savior and his teachings. To help you do this all month long, we're sharing testimonies from our apostles, words of wisdom and reflections that they've shared as special witnesses of Jesus Christ. Watch for these testimonies throughout the show. Knowing that the gospel is true is the essence of a testimony. Consistently being true to the gospel is the essence of conversion. We should know the gospel is true and be true to the gospel. I promise that as we come to a knowledge of the truth, and are converted unto the Lord, we will remain firm and steadfast and never fall away. The message ministry and atonement of Jesus Christ, our Savior, is our essential family curriculum. No scripture characterizes our faith better than 2 Nephi 25, 26. And we talk of Christ, we rejoice in Christ, we preach of Christ, we prophesy of Christ, and we write according to our prophecies that our children may know 
to what source they may look for a remission of their sins. Words to live by. Thanks, Elder Cook. The Jordan High School football team capped off a remarkable season by winning the 5A state championship in Utah. For the players, the season was about being united. And independent of administrators and coaches, team members found their unity in song. One God! One God! And for the first time since 1994, the state championship trophy in 5A for the Beat Diggers. Well family! Well family! Our 2012-2013 football season was a miracle. One goal! One goal! Playing out amazing. One team! One team! It was awesome. Who are we? Jordan! Who are we? Jordan! Everybody leave! Lots of hard work paying off. Everybody leave! Our football season was perfect. So when we first started the season, we knew we had the skill. Our goal was, you know, to win a state championship. We were tight and unbreakable. All we knew we were gonna win. Uh, we started singing hymns uh, last year, last season. I just was sitting down on the bus. I just started singing the Spirit of God. All of a sudden, two of us were singing at uh, three, ten. Next thing you know, the whole team was singing it on the bus, and it just the next week came and sang it again, and the following week, and then it just became a game routine for us. Nobody was like resentful that we were singing. They all wanted to like kind of join in. Yeah, I'm Muslim. They never put me under pressure, and like I just felt right. We want to be represented by something else, and we realized that the Lord could help us on the football field, just like He can help us in day-to-day uh, -day life. I actually, right when I saw the clock hit zero, I took a knee and just uh, thanked our Heavenly Father. Jordan took command early in this game and never let their foot off the gas pedal as the Beat Diggers win it 58 to two. I just got so emotional and they were singing that and I was like, whoa, like I could feel it. Well, there was kids in the crowd, crowd that were crying and it was just cool to feel the spirit that strong in a stadium at a football setting. I'm by no we're near perfect, and I, I learned probably more from these kids, on, especially in that realm. I'm so proud of them. I love those kids. I mean, they played because they loved each other, they loved their family, and uh, they were one. Oh, we Jordan! Oh, we Jordan! More than a dozen of the graduating seniors on Jordan's football team say they're preparing to serve missions right out of high school. Coming up next, a holiday movie with a sentimental message about the spirit of giving. To me, I believe the, the spirit of Christmas is doing something um, above and beyond yourself and doing something for someone else. I express my own witness that Jesus of Nazareth was and is the Son of God, the very Messiah of ancient prophecy. He is the Christ who suffered in Gethsemane, died on the cross, was buried, and who indeed rose again the third day. He is the resurrected Lord, through whom we shall all be resurrected, and by whom all who will may be redeemed and exalted in His heavenly kingdom. This is our doctrine, confirming all prior testaments of Jesus Christ and stated anew for our own time. It's a great time of year to turn our focus from commercialism to the Christ-like qualities of love, kindness, and forgiveness. You'll find them all in the inspiring holiday family film, Christmas Oranges. Everyone, there's a new girl. Christmas Oranges is the story of a young orphan girl who discovers that Christmas is all about the spirit of generosity. To me, it was, it was a great opportunity to do a film that was uplifting, and it was able to portray the spirit of giving and of kindness. We also have our imaginations. The popular book comes alive with notable actors like Nancy Stafford and Edward Herman, plus young Bailey Johnson as Rose, who had a lot of fun. <laughs> And she learned many life lessons. Just children, how sweet children are. Thank you for taking the blame for me. I'm sorry I got you in trouble. 
It's one of my favorite scenes because it captures the essence of that, where he goes in to apologize to her for what he had done, and she just frankly forgives him, and they move on. Rose, wake up. What's the matter? What is it? Hold out your hand, Rose. Time and again, the movie shows how, by small and simple means, you can make an impact on someone's life. Yes, but how? Who gave up their orange for me? It's a whole group of kids coming together to make someone else feel better. And with this one, it's just, just a simple act of, of sharing an orange with the girl who didn't get hers. This is heavenly. And so we can take that message and apply it to our times now and just look for ways that we can help others and, and make people feel better about themselves. Please. There are some great teaching moments. Folks react differently to certain circumstances and it's not our place to judge. Arthur, forgiveness will bring you the peace that you crave. I think it's more about forgiveness and understanding and with Rose's character, no matter what happens to her. Are you happy here, Rose? make the most of things. She has a positive outlook and is able to forgive everyone who does something to her and look for the best in people. The character of Rose, she, to me, she represented a lot. She had a lot of Christ-like qualities. We should think of everyone as in like Christ's perspective, like being kind to them, just looking at them for who they are. And Children can do that. They don't see people for their mistakes a lot or, or um, the way they look. Children look at people how, I think how, you know, Christ and God sees them. They need to see it because I think it's really going to change their lives. And it just shows that everyone can change. And I think everyone needs that, especially around Christmas time. John Lyde just finished a short film based on Coriantumr and Shiz in the Book of Mormon. And although Bailey wants to keep doing LDS films, she says she has no aspirations to make it big. Well, coming up. We'll be joined by number one billboard violinist Jenny Oaks Baker and performer Alex Sharp as they share a traditional Christmas carol with us. Jesus told the leader of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Discipleship is believing Him in seasons of peace and believing Him in seasons of difficulty. When our pain and fear are calmed only by the conviction that He loves us and keeps His promises, I testify that as you love Him, trust Him, believe Him and follow Him, you will feel His love and approval. Such powerful words from Elder Anderson. All month long, you've been hearing testimonies from our apostles, and next week, we will share the testimonies from our first presidency. And now, to help get you into the Christmas spirit, Grammy-nominated violinist Jenny Oaks Baker and former Celtic woman singer Alex Sharp join us to share a beautiful traditional Christmas song called Wexford Carol.
It was absolutely beautiful. Thanks so much for joining us. That song is from the new CD, Noel, which features a whole collection of Christmas songs rooted in European tradition and culture. We've got some to give away on our Facebook page at Mormon Times TV. Go there to get the details. And we hope that you enjoy the rest of your Sabbath day. <laughs>